Coach, this crowd wants to know, especially, how's Cam progressing? How's his shoulder? He's been doing well. You know, I was um, fortunate enough to, to see him after he had had the uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of his first um, recovery days, and he looked at me and said, Coach, I got the mobility back. So um, that was a plus, a huge plus. But the biggest thing, more so than anything else, and you heard him say it right there, he feels challenged. Mm -hmm. And any time he's felt challenged, he's stepped up his game and he's had a great, great season. So I'm kind of excited about going into this season with him. Coach, I'm interested in knowing how honest was and open was Cam Newton about how injured he was. When you've got a guy that's a high-end competitor like him, a former league MVP who's accomplished so much and clearly considered one of the great, great athletes that exist today, a lot of times they think about themselves as being close to invincible. How mm -hmm. honest and open was he about what was hindering him? Well, you know, during that little stretch, he, he really fought through it. And every time you'd check with him, every time you'd visit him, would say, I'm fine, I'll be all right, I'll be ready to go Sunday, which he was. He gave us everything he had. But the loss to New Orleans on the Monday night game, he came and, and, and really said it and was very open and honest about it. That's why I shot him down at the end of the year. Mm. You know, that he just, he, he wanted to give it everything he had, but he just, he knew he couldn't. So he opened up and, and, and said it right there, point blank. So I really do appreciate the honesty at that point. Coach, it was pretty obvious to fans watching. I could see his shoulder. He wasn't right. He right. was hurt after the after the Pittsburgh game. Um, and he is a franchise. He is the franchise player, and your fortunes rest upon him. The decision to play him, therefore, I know sometimes, depending on the franchise, doesn't just come from the head coach. It can come from above the head coach. In terms of the way this situation was handled, was there consultation with the front office? Was there an edict from the front office? Was that your call to continue to play him? It was my call. I mean, we got a lot of information from the doctors, the trainers, uh, the coaches. Um, you know, Mr. Tepper was aware of what was happening. You know, he stayed involved in the conversation. But at the end of the day, everything that we did on the field comes down to my decision. Let me get back to Cam in this respect on a football field, because I've been on the record stating this. I think he's an absolute stud. There's no question about that. His accuracy throwing the football elevated exponentially this season mm -hmm. compared to seasons past, and he deserves mass credit. Uh, he's mass had a good year credit. early. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. But I am looking at a guy that has been the franchise. He's Superman. That's what we've all seen and loved about Cam Newton. And I found myself wondering, and I said to Max, I wouldn't mind them getting a the quarterback to challenge him, to make sure he knows, even though this is before the YouTube video where he seems highly motivated. <laughs> he seems what challenged. I'm saying, he seems challenged now. But before that, I had stated, bring in another quarterback. Let him know, yo, ain't nothing guaranteed. You got to go out there and get it because what you did in the past doesn't have anything to do with today. What is your thought about that whole process looking forward to this organization? Well, I don't disagree with that because if there is one thing that he likes, it is to be challenged. Mm -hmm. And bringing another quarterback and bringing somebody in to compete with him most certainly does motivate him. But more so than anything else, you know, the naysayers, what he has heard, those whispers, those are motivating enough for him. And, and I really do. I, I look forward to the opportunity as we start getting ready, you know, in this offseason for OTA's mini camp and then right into training camp. Coach, I look at Christian McCaffrey. And even since college, like, he's not 195 pounds. The man's 210. And he's, like, to me, plays like a little mini Saquon, like a special, fast, twitchy kind of guy. But with those kind of guys who can cut and who can catch passes, there's sometimes a feeling like he can't run between the tackles. He, you can't have a reliable return on your run game with a guy like that. Can you with Christian McCaffrey, or is he more of like a specialized weapon to you? No, we ran him between the tackles. In fact, coming out of college, and this is one of the things that we looked up, his sophomore and junior year, he ran between the tackles more than any other college running back. Okay, so again, we know he can run the ball. We know he can sustain it through the middle of, of, of our offense. But the big thing we got to do is we got to be smart about it. You know, he had, he had well over 350 touches this season, right around 350. So we've just got to be smart how we utilize him, how many touches we give him, how much we expose him. But again, in this offense and what Norv Turner does with our, with our, with our playmakers, he spreads the ball around. You know, we yep. saw the development of what was going on with, uh, with, with DJ Moore and saw how this young man stepped up. We saw the reemergence of Curtis Samuels, seeing him get put back into it. You know, even though we lost Greg Olson, the tight end position was still very well represented by Ian, Ian Thomas. So again, our offense is multifaceted and we try to spread the ball around. I'm wondering what your priority should be 
going into next season? Is it buffering that defense? Because your best year, as far as I'm concerned, wasn't just about Cam. It was about a defense that mm -hmm. you relied upon. But in the same breath, I'm looking at guys like Funches, and I'm saying, all right, yeah, Calvin Benjamin's gone, of course. But I'm thinking about the level of help that Cam Newton might be required, especially somebody like you who didn't want him running the football as much as he did in the past. Right, and the truth of the matter, too, is, and, and you know, when I first got here, our philosophy was, you know, you've got to protect your quarterback and you've got to put playmakers around him. And we've tried to do that through the draft and through free agency. And we understand that. We know we've got to continue to protect our quarterback. So going into free agency, we will look at offensive alignment. Going into the draft, we will look at offensive alignment. But also, we'll look at playmakers. We'll look at guys that when the ball gets in their hands, they take the pressure off the quarterback, whether it be a runner, a receiver, a tight end, somebody like that. So, you know, as we go through this and we've talked about it. You know, I've sat down with our general manager, Marty Herney, and we've mapped out a plan both offensively, defensively, and look at the special teams where we need help. And again, we're going forward knowing that we've got to do things to make our team better. And first thing and first and foremost is we've got to protect the quarterback and put playmakers around him.